Bonjour, Anine. Hello, all of my friends at Salt River Elementary School. Uh, happy World Read Aloud Day! Yay for books! Uh, I'm Carol Lindstrom, the author of We Are Water Protectors. And I am just so, so, so honored to be here with you today um, to start this great day um, by talking a bit about uh, We Are Water Protectors and what inspired my book. Um, and, and then I'm going to read it. And I'm sure you've heard it, and I know that you have it, and I'm so grateful to you for, for that, that you have it. Um, and then I'm going to answer some wonderful questions that you have for me. So... The first thing I'm going to do is um, just tell you briefly what inspired this story. Um, it was inspired by Stanny Rock um, and the resistance there uh, to the pipeline, the oil pipeline that was coming through their um, their tribal lands. Um, and by they, I mean the Lakota, Stanny Rock Lakota people in North Dakota. Um, this was back in 2016 when the um, camp was set up and the water protectors um, stood to protect the water um, and the land. So, um, it, and also, of course, there are many, many, many um, tribal nations, indigenous peoples across the world that are fighting um, oil pipelines, natural gas pipelines, um, you know, just types of things that um, hurt Mother Earth. So that's where really the book, um, the inspiration from the story came from. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's why I decided to write the book. I wanted to bring people's attention to the um, situation. And I just didn't, I felt that, um, especially during the time that um, Standing Rock itself was happening, um, not many people knew about it. And so I felt that um, I needed to do something. And what I decided to do, and what you can do too, <laughs> is write a book. And you know, I had no idea at all, any way, shape or form, that this would happen with the book, you know, this the amazing way that people have embraced it everywhere. Um, so you just don't know, you never know. So I, I just always encourage you please to use your voice, to oh, never feel like just your voice is, is not enough because it is, I promise you. Now I would like to um, read um, We Are Water Protectors, illustrated by the amazingly talented Michaela Goad who, um, as you probably know, um, won the Caldecott Medal for her um, just stunning illustrations in our book. So, water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. 
we are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. The winged ones, the crawling ones. The four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes. The earth, we are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. And now at the end, I'm sure you saw that there is an earth steward and water protector pledge. And I would love to recite this with you if you want to recite it along with me or, um, you know, through your, in your classes or what have you. But I just love this part and I'd love to read it to you. I will do my best to honor Mother Earth and all its living beings, including the water and land. I will always remember to treat the Earth as I would like to be treated. I will treat the winged ones, the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes, the Earth, with kindness and respect. I pledge to make this world a better place by being a steward of the Earth and a protector of the water. And I just want to thank you again for letting me just take a moment today um, to read We Are Water Protectors to you. Um, and it really was an honor to do so. And so now I'm going to answer some questions that I have from some of you at, uh, in your classes. So let's start. Um, let's see, the first question that I have is it comes from first grader Colin Chinchilla who is in Miss Baldwin's class and Colin asks what's your favorite book oh gosh that's such a hard question because I love all books so much I don't know that I could ever pick um but I think if I had to pick, uh, I would say it's an author that's also Turtle Mountain, unlike myself. Um, her name is Louise Erdrich, and um, she's an older person author, an adult author, but she is my favorite author, and she has always been. So, um, but there are a lot of young books for young people that um, there's authors and creatives that I love, and I'm going to talk about some of their books um, at at the end here because I have another question about that. So thank you for that question, Colin. And my next question um, comes from, also from first grader, um, Henely, I'm gonna say it right, Henely Lick, I hope I said that right, um, who's also in Ms. Baldwin's class. And Henely asks, can you write a book about my family? Oh, I love that question. Um, you know what? You know who really is the best person to write a book about your family? I think it would be you. You know that? And you have so much to say because you know your family so well. You know um, where they came from and just who they are. And so, you know, I think you should start that book. It's never too soon. Um, and so I think, I think you would be the best person for that. Probably way better book than I could ever write. So... Thank you for that question. Let's see. Another question comes from, let's see. We have third grader Penelope Garza, who is in Miss Klein's class. 
And Penelope asks, are you a water protector? Am I a water protector? Well, yes, I definitely consider myself a water protector. Um, and also, you know what? I consider you and everyone there at Salt River Elementary School a water protector. All 250, I think, is that right, of you? Um, you all have the book. I'm sure you've all taken the pledge at the back of the book. So that means you're a water protector, and I'm grateful to have you. We are grateful to have you. We can never, ever have too many water protectors. So thank you for that question. Um, another question also comes from Ms. Klein's class, um, who is Jaden Scheld. I hope I also said that right. I'm sorry if I mispronounce names. Um, the question is, how was the picture of the earth made? That, you know, is a really good question because I, and I know what, I don't really have the answer to that because I did not do the illustrations for the book We Are Water Protectors. This, um, the illustrations were all done by Michaela Gold, who was you know the illustrator of the book who won the Caldecott Award for the book. Um, so I can tell you that Michaela works in watercolor and so she just does a lot of playing, mixing colors, getting the right color of blues and purples and all these pretty sort of, um, you know, cosmic colors that you would think of that were maybe up in the sky. Um, and then she does the same here with the earth. You know, she also, I think she may lay things over here or, you know, I don't know quite how she does the floral parts of it. But um, I know that she does work in watercolor and she's just so amazing. I'm just so grateful I was able to work on this book with her. So thank you so much for that question. Uh, let's see, we have another question here from, let's see, fifth grader, Daniel Garcia, who is in Ms. Spencer's class. And the question is, how do you know what to write about? Oh, that is such a good question. Hmm, how do I know? Well, usually for me, it's something that... Um, well, it typically always is going to be something that has to do with the environment or indigenous peoples, um, Native American peoples um, uh, fighting for, um, you know, or, you know, issues that have to deal with our people and also the environment. Um, when I hear of the story sometimes that, like I said, Standing Rock, which happened in in 2016, the actual camp and so forth to um, to protect the water was set up. Um, I just knew that I needed to tell a story about this. For, you know, it was just always in my head and always in my heart. And I felt I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get it out of there. It was always there. And I just wondered what could I do to help bring um, awareness to the situation and how could I uh, educate others about it but not you know and so that's where the um that's sort of what I like to do anytime things like that I can't get out of my head or my heart I know that there's a book there so typically I start just taking notes and meet you know notes of all sorts papers of every sort here and there and I put them in a shoe box or whatever and then you know, when I think I've got sort of a story gelling, an uh, actual, has a plot, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end, then I think, well, all right, I got something here. Um, and then I take all my pieces of paper out and I organize them and try to make sense of what I have. But um, yeah, that's what I usually like to write about. I like um, to write about issues and, you know, sort of things that are important um, to the Native peoples and also the the planet. So good question. Thank you for that. And then I think we have another question here from Brianna Carlos. Um, Brianna, I hope I said that right. Brianna Carlos, uh, who was in Miss Calvin's sixth grade class. And Brianna writes, why did you want to write or become an author? Because you could be do because you're not because you could be doing anything. Yet you chose to write. That is a good question, Brianna. And I did a lot of things in my life. I did almost anything. No, um, I, you know, I, 
have always been interested in so many things. Like, you know, I'm always, when I hear of it, like a different job or something, I'm like, well, that sounds cool. Or, <coughs> excuse me, a profession or something. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Or, you know, I always want to do research or I love to know stuff. I always, always want to know things. And I think when I want to know things, that a lot of things that I um, know, um, other people probably might want to know too, because it's fascinating. It's something I've never heard about before or knew about. And so um, those are usually what, um, like that, I knew in the back of my mind that I would be a, wanted to be an author one day. But I always felt I would be an author of books for adults. I never considered young people because um, they didn't have all of the wonderful books available that we have, you know, today. We didn't, I didn't have those when I was a child. Um, and so I just thought, well, I'm just going to write someday. I love books. I love the library. I'm always reading. I mean, I always had a book. I was always reading when I was a kid was often at the library on the weekend, pretty much every 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 day of the weekend you could find me at the library. And so, um, but I didn't know that, like I said, I didn't know how that would work out because I knew being an author was tough and hard to do and to be, get to that level. So I did a lot of different things in my life. I um, worked as a secretary. I worked at his administrative jobs and um, human resources jobs and then I went to back to college and I, um, I studied architecture. Then I was an architectural lighting designer for many years and had a lighting design firm. Um, but writing was always something that I, I loved in books. And then when I had my son, um, which was in 2007, um, I, you know, of course, was reading books to him all the time when he was a baby. And that's when my love of writing for children kind of, that's where I discovered that because I saw the books were so much different than when I grew up. I had the picture books and all these different, um, you know, middle grade and young adult and there's much more um, quality than I had, but I didn't see a lot of native um, children in stories. I didn't see a lot of children like me even when I was reading to my son or even a lot of children, I don't like him. And so that's why I thought, well, I, I think, you know, this might be what I write. <laughs> this is might be what I do is, is the right for young people. And because I found that I had a lot of stories to tell and I like to tell them to children. I like being able to take a subject matter that may be a little bit more you know, difficult to write about sometimes, like a pipeline and oil and whatnot and turn it into a story that is easy to understand for all, anybody, you know. Um, and young people usually are it's so easy, you, you know, to talk to about subjects like this because you just get it. You understand these things. You know the importance of water and it's easy to talk to you about this stuff. So, yeah, I love to write for young people and... I'm just grateful it took me a long time to get to this place in my life. Um, but however you get to where you are, you know, in those places, you know, always think of those. It's a journey, you know. I don't think of any of the things I did in my past as lost time uh, because I know it helped me to get to where I am. You know, all those pieces helped build me. My character, you know, being able to take critiques on work, uh, being able to talk to people and in, in front of people. And, you know, so all of that's important. So, you know, if you love writing and you love and you think you'd like to write too someday or now, you know, start doing it. Write, 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 write. And read, read, read. And, you know, just do and, and don't worry about how and when things will happen because they just will. Anyway, thank you for that question. And let me see. I think I have a couple more. I better talk fast. <laughs> I have a question here from um, sixth grader Lexi Milford, who was in Miss, Miss Yellow Hair's class. Lexi asks, can you tell us a 
about where you come from and about your family. And yes, I am a citizen of the Turtle Mountain Band of Ojibwe. Uh, my, my relatives come from the um, North Dakota, the northern North Dakota um, area. Um, Turtle Mountain is on the 49th parallel, you know, which really doesn't mean much, of course, to us, but um, in the Canadian area as well. That's where my ancestors come from, um, the Saskatchewan um, Red River, Turtle Mountain area. Um, but I did not grow up in um, my tribal homelands. My mother um, married my father and they moved to Nebraska when I, before I was born and I was born in Omaha, Nebraska. That's where I grew up. And then um, I went to graduate school in New York, upstate New York. And then I found myself here on the East Coast. And now I live in the, um, I live in Maryland. So in the um, uh, East Coast, mid-Atlantic area now. So yes, and my parents have both passed, but um, I, yeah, I'm learning a lot about my ancestry. And that's another wonderful thing I love about writing um, because of the stories I choose to write and to tell about um, I also learn a lot about my ancestry and a lot of things my mother didn't even know, you know, <clears throat> and so forth. So um, that's me. That's a little about me. So thank you for that question, Lexi. And we have another question from Miss Yellow Hair's class. This one is from Lacey Richards. And Lacey, um, sixth grader again, asks, are you writing more books? Yes. Oh, goodness. Yes. Oh, tons, tons, tons. And um, she says, can you tell us a bit about them? Yes. Well, I do have three picture books coming out um, in the next couple of years and um, have two coming out into 2023. Um, one is called My Powerful Hair. The other is, um, I have to think about this, Autumn <laughs> Peltier, um, Water Warrior. And then I have in 2024, a book coming out called The Gift of the Great Buffalo. Those are all picture books. And right now I'm working on a middle grade historical fiction and a middle grade fantasy, sci-fi. And I'm also working on about six other picture books. So yes, I, I love, I've got a lot of different things going on at one time. I often feel for me that um, I sometimes will work on something and <clears throat> When I feel like I just don't want to look at that piece of work for a while, I'm just like, have it, I'll put it aside and then pick up another thing maybe that's sort of calling to me. And I'm it's like, oh, well, maybe open this file up and have a look at it. So that just kind of works best for me. So thank you for that question. And I think I have one more question. And this is also from Miss Yellow Hair's sixth grade class. This is from Kayla Schertz. And the question is, why did you write We Are Water Protectors? And what did you learn about the topic when writing it? Well, I think um, probably answered your question, probably with all my babbling prior, um, you know, because I feel the need and felt the need to um, bring awareness to um, indigenous people's fights for, um, for the water and for the land. So that is really what inspired the story and why I wrote it. Um, and where I learned about the topic was, gosh, I'm going to say the most, I won't say the biggest thing I learned about it was, um, I probably the friendships and people that I've made from the Standing Rock Lakota tribal, you know, the nation itself, how many dear friends I've met um, and still have, you know, today and will always have, um, you know, that was I wished I could have went when it happened. I wasn't able to. And so that was really another reason why I wrote this book is because it was sort of my gift to, really in my heart of what I could do. Um, other, you know, because I felt so helpless about um, not being able to help. Um, but I learned a lot, of course, about um, pipelines and I learned a lot about the extraction industry. And I certainly learned a lot about um you know, all of the bad things that the pipelines bring into areas, um, you know, not to mention, not only the leaks that happen and how frequently they happen, which is quite often, pretty much every day, um, but just all the bad kind of things that bring that pipelines do bring in too. So, um, yeah, so I did learn a lot from it, but again, it helped me teach, be able to teach something and help to bring awareness to something. So, um, um, I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for you all and to you all for, again, um, embracing our book, We Are Water Protectors, and for um, 
for having it and for letting me visit with you this morning and to be part of your um, kickoff World Read Aloud Day. Yay! Thank you again. And I'm Miigwech. And I uh, just thank you so much. And just going to send you tons of love and just keep well, please.